Around this time each Wednesday, um, it's going to be over the next few weeks, we're going to try and find out what it's like to actually live with an intellectual disability. Joining me in the studio now is John Hannigan. He's the Managing Director of Sunbeam House and service users Sarah Bean and Stephen Dignan. Good morning, guys. Morning. Morning, Good morning. Morning. Good morning. John, we might start with you sure. first. Um, Tell me about the work that Sunbeam House does. Uh, Sunbeam is a a county-wide service for people with intellectual disability. At the moment, we support about 420 people right across the county uh, with all, from all levels of independence to people who need day-to-day support just to to be uh, in existence, as it were. And uh, what we, we employ about 420 people across the across the organisation. And uh, our whole uh, remit is to try and uh, make sure that we have inclusion within our community for for the people that we support. And uh, what we want to do over the next few weeks is to look at it from every different type of uh, perspective. So today, we have uh, people who we support, so that's Sarah and Stephen. Uh, and over the big next few weeks... Around. Big smiles all around. absolutely. <laughs> they can't wait, I'm telling you, they want to get at it. And then over the next few weeks, we'll have uh, family members, people who support uh, people with a, a disability, and also people who help run our organisation uh, to demonstrate what it takes to do that as well. So we're hoping that we can bring awareness for the, our community and I have to say the communities we work in generally are pretty good but there's still that reticence uh, to get involved uh, to work with to understand what we do and to help the people that we support as well so we're hoping that through this series of uh, uh, dates with yourself and with uh, Declan that we can we can build that awareness. Because you mentioned a word there and I suppose maybe in full disclosure my sister has Down syndrome so this is something that we at home are kind of sure. used to and you mentioned a really important word that we embrace at home is inclusion. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not a, we shouldn't have a them and us. No, it's absolutely just not. Us. It's just us and uh, I've come to understand over the years that I've been working in this area that we all learn differently and we all learn at a different pace. It doesn't matter how clever you are or how much help you need doing that but we can all learn to do the same thing things. And one of the things you'll be hearing about today, both from Sarah and from Stephen, is about where they work, what they do, uh, what they enjoy doing. And when people actually start to hear people talking about it for themselves, I think they'll start to realise, actually, that's just like me. That's just like you. We have the same kind of things. We have the same things in common that we enjoy doing. And I think that's it's really crucial, important. isn't it? Because e- even if you have an intellectual disability, th- you still can contribute to society. You know, you, you can have a job, you can function, you can add to the general good. It's not that you need to be taken care of. You have something to add too, don't you? That's exactly it. And that's the most undervalued part of the, uh, people with disability is the fact that they do contribute. It's not that they are takers from society. They actually give a lot to society, both in terms of taxes, believe it or not, because these guys both work, so they both pay taxes. Uh, but they also uh, volunteer, so they're putting a lot back into the community itself, as well as being people who are great family members, great uh, yeah. friends. That they are complete contributors to our society. Well, let's move then to the stars of the show. <laughs> no fairy, no fairy, you and me. No one wants to hear from us. You're dead uh, right. We might start with you, Sarah Behan. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> this is a good time to get shy, Sarah. Don't worry about no, it. No, I no. get shy every Believe day. Believe me, Sarah's I'm not shy. shy. <laughs> Sarah, tell me, so you work in Tesco. There you go. Yeah, you've got your uniform on. Tell me about your job in Tesco. What do you do? I do three jobs. Jeez. Tell me about the three of them. Because I'm good, I do three jobs. I do pack bags. Mm. I do baskets. I do uh, baskets, uh, putting stuff back mm. on the she- shelf. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And are you? Tell me what a day, normal day, is like for you, Sarah. You get up in the morning, and then what do you do? I get up in the morning, do myself up. Um, Go off to work. Get How'd the you, bus. You get the bus. Um, and you get in. And put on my makeup. Nice. Do myself up. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sure you're looking good for the customers. Yeah. And uh, tell me how. What a time do you work? You start at what time and you finish at what time? You know the song. No, what song? <laughs> Walking nine uh, to five. <laughs> you do not. So that's your hours. Well, I don't walk to nine to five. It's only a song. <laughs> oh, okay. I, walk I thought you were Dolly half, Parton. Half one to half three. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and are you there Monday to Friday? No. You do, no. A couple of Wednesday, days. Wednesday, Thursday, get get cash. Yeah. Thursday. Nice. Get me cash on Thursday. Yeah. So 
So you could, that's payday for you. Yeah. Nice. The money goes into the hole in one. Nice. Yeah. And that's where you get your money. So you're doing your two days a week and you're doing So the if I'm going away on high days, um, if I'm going away on high days, yeah. uh, if I want that, I take that out of Holland Wall. And you're independent and you're paying for I'm yourself. Going, or if I'm going shopping, if I'm going clothes shopping, um, yeah. Yeah, so you're, yeah. you're, you're, uh, you're... Independent. You're like Beyonce, working woman, oh, independent, doing it for yourself. <laughs> I love it. And Stephen, you chat to me for a second now. And this is Stephen Dignan. Stephen, tell me about yourself. Um, I'm Stephen and uh, I live in Red, Red Cloud, Gang and Blind Well. And, uh, yeah, I'm um, living in, um, with my family, my mum, Risha, and my dad, Paul. So, all good. Excellent. And do you work? You have a job? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, um, I work in Tesco's in Shankill. Oh, another Tesco. Tesco's <laughs> yeah. a big employer around here. Yeah. Very good. And what do you do in Tesco, Stephen? Well, I literally do um, cardboard and plastics, put them in a baler, and um, I go stacking the plastics and facing off, go, um, keep the shop nice and chuggy, you know. Very good. And do you enjoy it, Stephen? Do you enjoy what you do? Are they nice? Yeah, they are very nice, yeah. And do you chat to your friends in work? Are they good yeah, people? Yeah, yeah. And also, I get a bus, um, the public bus, go 145 to, um, to my shop, and my shop coach, Rob, he collects me a tree. Very good. Um, John, if I come back to you uh, sure. for a moment, John Hannigan, who's the, the managing director of Sunbeam House. John, the, the Stephen and Sarah are talking to me about real independent lives. Absolutely. Like, solo transport to work yep. working making money buying their own you know taking care of themselves on holidays and shopping I mean, that's what it's about isn't it it is it is that about uh, developing and encouraging independence uh, for many years uh, through no fault of anybody's but it, how the system worked we cosseted people too much we actually took away their independence we kept them in group areas and what it meant was that people lost the ability to be independent and what we try to do and what we work with the guys on is ensuring that they they take those risks that are appropriate but also they get out there and enjoy life because yeah. as you can hear from Sarah and <laughs> Stephen who hasn't talked about his golf yet but we'll Stephen's, an right. <laughs> Stephen's an international golfer you know these are the kind of things that they do for themselves and they do by themselves as well most of the time so from that perspective as I was saying net contributors to our economy to our society and we we tend to over oversee that we tend to see that uh, people uh, because they have a disability of some sort are less in some way but the reality is there's a real richness from what they can bring both in terms of our knowledge and learning but also in terms of that contribution so it is something we do we do encourage significantly is that level of independence where possible and i suppose the other thing and again i'm, I'm conscious of this from my sister who's down syndrome there's uh, I think there needs sometimes to be a broader acknowledgement of the fact that people with intellectual disabilities also grow up. You're not in a prolonged <laughs> state of, you're nodding in agreement, absolutely. Yeah, you're not in a prolonged state of childhood. You're, you no. become an adult and need the respect and, and dignity shown to adults. Absolutely. And that is difficult for people sometimes to... to to put the two together. Um, they see somebody who may and may, may from time to time not necessarily act as an adult, but still res deserve the respect the res and also the freedoms in some respects that come with that where it's possible. Obviously, people still need support from time to time, but it is making sure that that support is appropriate and that it is respectful in that, uh, in that area of adulthood. Excellent. Stephen, we were mentioning there about your golf. You have a stellar international sports career going on. <laughs> Tell me about your golf. Okay. I started um, playing golf in 2003 in playing World Golf Club, uh, where I am on remember the first time I played on and Irish team in Special Olympics was in Monaco in 2004. 
That's brilliant. And you know what? And because I usually work in the newsroom, I'm very familiar with reporting on ah, Stephen. That's how I know you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And you know what? It, meeting Stephen is like meeting a celebrity for me because I've been I've been reporting on yes, him. Steve. And talking about how great he did with the Special Olympics in his golf. And here he is in front of me. Sarah, you, do you have hobbies as well? What do you do when you're not working? Mm. <laughs> that'll you, be the day. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the day when they don't have you yeah. working. Um, I, other days I do line dancing. Very good. Yeah, I'm doing line dancing every Monday. It's only, what, five year old? Five year old to pay to mm. start a join. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. What else do you do, sir? The, the woman said I know my steps. Because she asked me, ha- Have I been doing a long time? <laughs> and I said, Yeah. Because you're like a pro. Because I have <laughs> my own hat. They all kill my hat. Awesome. So you turn up with your hat ready to go when the oh, hat yeah. goes on. Where's it going now? <laughs> yeah. Um, what, I have not- my own guitar. No. Yeah. So you've got the hat and the guitar. Yeah. You are set for line dancing. And when you're not doing the dancing, because I think you, I I, uh, I, have a feeling you do a lot more than just the line dancing in the Tesco's. What do you do? Uh, do you want me to go? Huh? Guitar lessons. I do guitar lessons. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Tanya, my keyboard in the house is... Is um, she's learning guitars, but she asked me, she wants me to show her the cards. Very be- good. Because she knows I can do the cards. So you're now teaching your key worker? Yeah. That's pretty cool. John, we're, we're mentioning key workers there, yeah. just for people who are unfamiliar maybe with the term. Yeah. Sarah was saying she lives in a house with a key worker. That's so right. tell us about the accommodation set up, say, in Sarah's case. Yeah, in Sarah's case, Sarah lives in Bray uh, and Sarah would live with uh, three or four other people in the house who we would Ten support. other people. How many? No, no, there's three. No. There's four. The four other people. That's right. And it, we would have people who support uh, those individuals uh, with some of the day-to-day chores and living that might that are required to live independently. Mm. Uh, so Tanya would be Sarah's key worker who would be her main contact in terms of issues or things that she would like to see resolved or things that she might want to do. So uh, Tanya would help Sarah organise things uh, as would Tracy from Times Tracy Times well. is my key worker here. Tracy is in the room but Tracy is <laughs> off <laughs> mic because she's shy I think. So Tracy, Tracy you're more than welcome hon, to, to have a chat with us. No she's shaking she's Shy. She, she is shy. She is shy. That's okay. But John, the, all of that is, you know, living independently. Mm. It's all this move, this mm. push for independence. Talk to me, I suppose, it, it, it wouldn't be realistic if we didn't talk um, dollars and cents, I suppose, mm. when we are at this mm. point. Talk to me about funding, talk to me about money, how the financial position is. Financial position over the last number of years has uh, been reflective of the economy in general. Uh, We've seen very significant amounts of money taken out of the organisation, but yet we've still managed to maintain the same level of services, frontline services, supports for people over that time. But it is a struggle and continues to be a struggle. We're hoping, uh, everybody's talking about green shoots and uh, amounts of money that might be available in the future. The reality is that it does need investment in order to keep going. One of the biggest things, and I think Sarah particularly would probably talk about this a bit more than I should, is uh, the impact, for example, of HICWA and regulation, which is a positive thing that we absolutely welcome. Yes, yeah, But stupid. it hasn't been invested in uh, from an organisational perspective. And as a result of that, time has been taken away from supporting people to do administrative work that we wouldn't normally want to, to, to share that time with. And I think Sarah probably uh, can say a little bit about that, how it's impacted on her, because it has had an impact on her. Sarah, tell me about Yeah, this. I find it stupid that... Um, I find it stupid that it's... it's um, we don't need... Hikra. The the staff, whoever's on the next day after day, um, they ask you what you have for breakfast, what you have for dinner, what you have for nine o'clock. Yeah. So it's. it's I think that's a bit uh, silly. 
Okay, so it's is it sort of regulatory jumping through hoops that's taking time from you know, letting Sarah get on with what she wants to get on with? Exactly, that's exactly it. And it, it, along with that is the visits are usually very respectful and fairness to the people who come, the inspectors course, who come, yeah. so we've no issue with the inspectors. It's the nature of the regulation itself has become quite... Uh, institutional in its, in its own way. So, for example, we most of our guys would live in houses that are in the community that are like your house and my house. Uh, I know my house certainly wouldn't pass a HICWA inspection because I don't have... <laughs> I know mine would <laughs> Yeah, we don't have uh, running men over the door saying exit this way. We don't have different cutting boards for uh, different things. Uh, we don't have emergency lighting or in some cases, not necessarily in Sunbeam, but in other places I've heard, we don't have a sprinkler system in our three-bedroom semi-detached. So, so from that perspective, the regulation is requiring things that are more institutional than what we would like to see, which is people living ordinary lives in ordinary places in an ordinary way. Okay. And while we welcome the regulation because it's absolutely required to ensure safety, to ensure that people are there, because we've all heard yes, about the abuses. Yes, there's a reason, I suppose, for absolutely. regulation. Yeah, and it, so from that perspective, it's good. it just needs to be a bit more proportional in terms of recognising that these guys, for example, <coughs> Uh, live very, very independent lives. I'm, I'm seeing that. I think, I suppose, maybe, guys, the last word should, again, go back to the stars of the show. Uh, Sarah, if you could, I suppose, if you would like people to know one thing about you, what would you like people to know about you? Because you're interesting, you work... I'm a lovely person. <laughs> Do you know what? That's the perfect thing to say. You really are. You really are. And Stephen, what would you like people to know about you? Um, half a Wicklow knows me in, in Wicklow County. <laughs> half a Wicklow does know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't really need them to. They know what they know already about your sporting prowess. They know you're a great golfer. Yeah, I am. And I play golf in, um, in Bremen Golf Club every Saturday mornings. So um, on this Saturday coming, actually, we're going to Scotch um, play golf in Scott Golf. So we are, we are back as normal this actually, hopefully. Excellent. Back to the grindstone. John, we might uh, we might end on you there. Um, and okay. Stephen has something else he wants just, to... Yeah, he could yeah. just read out something that he had written Stephen, there that go he, for he wrote himself yeah, that okay. he'd like to say. I'd love to hear it. Uh, congratulations to all the athletes who took part in the games this year in L.A., I want to say congratulations to Amy Quinn. Um, he, she did very well in Special Olympics. Um, she, 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 she did uh, make herself proud and stuff. Um, I'm proud of them. Uh, they were all great. great to win all those medals and ribbons. I would like to say a big well done to my f- fellow Blue Garfans members Leo O'Brien for golf uh, and Sean Rowan for bowling and Laura Reynolds for basketball uh, they get us all in Blue Garfans and themselves proud. I would like to play a special song for them. Uh, we are the champions. Oh, lovely. Well, you know what? We're going to have to try and fit that one in before the end of the show. Lovely. Thank you, Stephen. John, uh, final word to you. And we're going to, this is, we mentioned, just going to be the first in a a series of times Mm -hmm. you're going to come in and chat to us from different angles. Next week, what what are we going to look at? Next week, we have family members uh, who are supporting their person in their family in respect of a person with disability. So what it's like from their perspective to be part of our community as well. Uh, the, The issues that they face but also the joys that it brings because I think one of the things we need to celebrate over the coming weeks is actually how ordinary lives can be and how good that is for people uh, we hear a, th- a lot of words about special and you know <coughs> needs and all, but the reality is that w- people are looking for an ordinary life and to live it in an ordinary way and if we can afford that to them and families 
will talk about that and how they experience that. Uh, we also have people who are supporting people in the front line. So uh, what it's like to work with somebody who might have a disability as well, because that is sometimes overlooked. It's a career that people don't consider for many for many of their career progressions, but actually it's a fantastically rewarding way to work. Uh, and also then in the following weeks, we're hoping to talk about what it is like to manage an organisation like Sunbeam. And there are many organisations like ours across the country uh, in terms of the both the resources requirements, but also the learning that comes from doing that for society. So they're the kind of things we hope to t- to look at over the next few weeks. Fantastic. Well, Declan will be back uh, in a couple of weeks anyway, and I'll be back off uh, out of the hot seat. <laughs> good man, today. Declan. <laughs> good man, Declan. And I tell you what, I'm going to be going to be uh, glued to it. Thank you Great. so much, John Thanks Hannigan. He's the managing director of Sunbeam House. Sarah Behan and Stephen Dignan, the real stars of the show today at Service Users at Sunbeam. Thank you so much for joining. Us. Thank you so much for joining. Us. Thank you so much for joining. Us.